Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lucas Monster. Today, we're going to be looking at the worst of first all Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian Season 2 figures. Now, as you guys know, Mandalorian Season 3 is coming out in just under two weeks, which is incredible. And we're going to be preparing by going and ranking every single Mandalorian figure from worst to first. Now, I already did a Mandalorian Season 1 video, so make sure to go check that one out. It'll be pinned in the card and linked in the description. But this video is strictly figures from Mando Season 2, and there are a total of 18 figures in Mando Season 2 that we've gotten in the Black Series, which is pretty crazy to think about, and like I said, today we're going to be ranking them worst to first. Real quick though, if you are new to the channel, make sure you go down and hit the like button and subscribe. We're actually doing a February monthly giveaway. We're going to be giving away this Umbra Operative Arc Trooper a week from tomorrow, which is kind of crazy, so if you have not yet hit that sub button, make sure to go do that and then all you have to do is comment on the giveaway video that'll be pinned in the card and linked in the description but you do have to be sub to enter so make sure you go do those two things and on to the video anyway coming in at the number 18 spot i put jedi ruins boba fett now this one might be a controversial pick but this is based off my personal experiences in my opinion and i just personally had a really crappy experience with this figure this guy did go up for pre-order over a year ago and it just came in a few days ago so this guy was on pre-order for almost a year and as soon as i got him the figure broke the jetpack on the back snapped and because of that, he does rank a little bit lower. But there's also the fact that the figure is just inaccurate. They use the Book of Boba Fett body rather than using the accurate body for the figure. And because of that, he gets last place. Coming in at the number 17 spot is Din Djarin in his Morak Stormtrooper disguise. Now this one, it's just, it's the least memorable version of Din Djarin, to be honest. I don't know. I think it's alright, but I think if you're going to get the Mandalorian, you need the Beskar armor. Worst case scenario, this guy is just kind of another Stormtrooper because he comes with a helmet, but I don't know. I just think for the Din Djarin face sculpt, it's not really worth it. And to be honest, that face sculpt, it's a little off. It doesn't look exactly like Pedro Pascal, so because of that, he comes in at a little bit of a lower spot. Coming into the 16th spot, it's the exact same reason. We have Miggs Mayfeld in his Stormtrooper disguise. Again, worst case scenario, he's just another Stormtrooper on the shelf. But yeah, least memorable outfit. I think the Season 1 outfit is much better. And plus, the face sculpt's just a little off. So yeah, exact same reasons as Din Djarin. Just not the best Miggs Mayfeld we have in the line. Coming in at number 15, I gave it to Grogu. Now, I want to get this right down on the table right away. This Grogu is an amazing figure. Uh, by far the best Baby Yoda slash Grogu figure we've ever gotten in the line. If you want a Grogu figure, this is the one you go for. But the problem with this one, it's just overpriced. It's a $25 figure, and, you know, if you're going to get this one compared to literally any other figure in the line, you're overpaying for this one. And so... That's the main reason he's lower. If he was a $15 figure, he'd be in the top five for sure, but that $25 price just really hurts. Coming in at number 14, I gave it to HK87, and this one is a little bit lower just because I don't really care about the character that much. They're just some background droids at Ahsoka fights, and I just don't really think they fit in super well with the Mandalorian shelf, to be honest. I don't know, I think it's a cool looking figure, and I think the articulation's great, the soft goods look pretty cool, but, you know, it's just kind of a background droid, and compared to some of the other characters on this list, he kind of just blends in. Coming in at the number 13 spot is Grief Karga from Season 2 of The Mandalorian. Now this one, I think, is an improvement in the face sculpt area. I think this face sculpt looks much better than the Season 1 version, but I just personally like the Season 1 outfit more. He does a lot more in Season 1 than he does in Season 2, in my opinion, and uh, I just think the whole traffic cone look with the hard goods... Uh, plastic like robes it just doesn't fit super well so you know if I had to get either the season one or the season two version I'd probably go with the season one version over this one coming in at the number 12 spot is Tython Boba Fett now this one is his like Tusken Raider outfit and I think it's all right I really love this figure like figure wise it's a good figure Great soft goods, good articulation, really good accessories. Overall, it is a good figure. Uh, biggest problem is I just don't really care for the outfit. I mean, uh, I think it's Boba Fett. Boba Fett has to have his armor, and the Tusken Raider robes, they're cool, but they're just not Boba Fett armor level, and that's one reason why he's a little bit lower on the list. I think he's a great figure, but he's just not really Boba Fett, you know? 
Coming in at the number 11 spot is Trapper Wolf. This one is a Hasbro Pulse exclusive, and I gotta say, it's alright. I mean, it is the Dave Filoni figure, so I, I gotta give it credit where credit's due. D Dave Filoni is pretty cool, and I do like that about this figure. But on the other hand, it's just kind of an overpriced X-Wing pilot. Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I liked his appearance in the show, but for the raised up prices of this convention exclusive, it's just not really worth it in my opinion. Um, I like Trapper Wolf. I think he's a cool character, but we barely see him enough to justify that price in my opinion. Coming in at the number 10 spot is Casca Reeves. Now, I really like this one. I love the female Mandalorian body that they have. It's great. I love the color scheme. All blue looks great. And then, of course, the Sasha Banks face mold underneath looks incredible. So, overall, I really like this figure and uh, definitely deserves the number 10 spot. Coming in at the number 9 spot is actually Bo-Katan from The Mandalorian. This is the exact same body that Casca Reeves is on, so... Right off the bat, you know it's going to be a good figure, but I like this color scheme a lot more than uh, than Casca's. I love the lighter blue with the white contrast. It looks really, really good. And then, of course, you do have the amazing photoreal face underneath. Uh, it's like one thing to get a good-looking actress for the role, but the fact that they got the voice actress that actually plays her in Clone Wars 2 is incredible, incredible to me. So uh, a lot of points there, and the figure turned out great. So definitely deserves that number nine spot. Coming in at the number 8 spot is the Mandalorian Luke. Now, this one definitely has a nostalgia feature to it just because I really loved Luke's appearance at the end of Mando Season 2. But uh, this is a brand new Luke Skywalker mold, and I think it's almost fair to say it's one of the better ones we have in the line. I don't know if it's as good as some of the uh, like Empire Strikes Back ones we have, but if you compare it to like the Return of the Jedi Lukes that we have, this one is by far the best, and uh, definitely one of the better Mark Hamill uh, like faces we have as well so definitely a good Luke and I can't wait to see what they do more with this brand new Luke body in the future because it has a lot of potential. Coming in at the number 7 spot is the Artillery Stormtrooper. Now this one is an Amazon exclusive, which means it was a little bit harder to get when it came out, which is unfortunate, but it is on that new Stormtrooper body, which is incredible. Any figure on that body is already like a really, really good figure, but I like the yellow color scheme. I think it came out really well, but this one really shines in the accessories field. He has the mortar launcher, a blaster, a backpack, and then four mortar rounds that come with it. So this guy is really stacked with accessories, and, uh, you know, it's something that not a lot of figures really get that treatment. Some of them get, like, less accessories than they really should. So to see Hasbro go all out on this one figure, it's really nice, and I think he deserves a higher spot on this list. Coming in at the number 6 spot is Axe Wolves, and right off the bat this one is on the Death Watch Mandalorian body, so he's already got great sculpting and great articulation, and then he does have that Axe Wolves head sculpt underneath, which is really good, it really surprised me, the likeness looks great, and I think the biggest thing for me is just the color scheme, I love the black and blue mixed together, and I really wish this guy got some more screen time in Mando Season 2, because his figure turned out great. Then coming in at the number 5 spot is the Snowy Mando build the pack and now this one might be controversial for being so high but I absolutely love this figure I know not everybody loves the Mando repaints but I love them just keep giving me Mando repaint after Mando repaint because I will buy them because I love the Mandalorian and I think the snowy one is no exception I love these snowy paint apps I think it looks really good and definitely gives some depth to the character and then I love the spider it comes with now personally I have this one in my fallen order setup rather than my Mando setup but I love the spider it's pretty cool and uh, you know comes with a baby yoda as well so overall really cool set and this one definitely gets more hate than it deserves coming into the number four spot is Cobb Vanth now this one is a super underrated figure the paint apps on this guy are incredible I love the battle damaged armor the like likeness to the actor is incredible the like the face is really really good one of the best in the line by far accessories are good Jetpack looks awesome. I think the biggest problem is that this is a deluxe figure when I think it should be a single release. But other than that, it's a great figure and it's definitely uh, underrated compared to some of the other figures that we've seen in the Mandalorian line. Coming in at the number three spot is Ahsoka. Now, I know we're going to be getting some more Ahsokas in the future because of the Ahsoka show, but this figure is pretty great. Articulation looks good, sculpting is great, and then the face is what this one really shines at. The, uh, the likeness to uh, the actress is incredible, 
and it just looks really, really good. Overall, it looks like it's taken straight out of The Mandalorian Season 2, and I really like it. I, I'm a huge Ahsoka fan as well. I'm not a, like, I'm more of a fan of her in The Clone Wars than I am in The Mandalorian, but this figure is great, and it's hard to ignore that. Coming in at the number two spot is the Amazon 3-pack that does have Grogu, the Mandalorian, and Ahsoka. Now, this one might be controversial for being so high as well, but I absolutely love this set. I know some people don't like it, but it's one of the best sets we've gotten in the Black Series ever, in my opinion. Uh, the They pretty much just took all of these really good figures we already have in the line, and they made them better by giving them more accessories, which I love. Ahsoka has the cloak, Mando has the spear, Baby Yoda now has a brand new mold to where he can hold the cup. Overall, they really knocked this out of the park, and this is one of the most underrated sets in all the Black Series, because it really is incredible, and if you don't have any of these figures, I highly suggest you go pick up this set, because it is going to be the best way to get all of them. And then coming in at the number one spot is the Dark Trooper. This guy is incredible. The sculpting on this, this figure is really just insane. I love all of the glossy black armor as well. It's something that a lot of figures don't have. Like some of them are really glossy or really matte, but it's like all over. And this guy has a lot of depth to where like the undersuit is more of a matte color, but the armor is glossy. And it just looks really, really good. Uh, also comes with the booster, like the, not the boosters, but like the rocket effects for his feet whenever he's flying, and the swappable hands, the, the fisted hands, which are something that Hasbro doesn't really ever do with the Black Series. They very rarely give swappable hands, so to see it on a figure like this is incredible. Overall, one of my favorite figures in the line to date. Like, it's a great figure. My biggest problem is that the eyes are just a little too dim. Like, I wish they were a brighter red, so they're a little bit more vibrant. Other than that, though, this is one of the best Black Series figures ever, hands down, and I highly suggest you guys go pick it up if you haven't yet. But yeah, that is my worst to first of all these figures. Obviously, that is just my opinion, and you guys might disagree, so comment down below what your worst to first would be if you would rank any of these guys differently. But like I said, that was just my personal opinion. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to go down, hit the like button, and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. And also, go make sure to enter the giveaway that is still live. It is linked in the description. Make sure to go check out the Lukeness Monster merch and the Lukeness Gaming Channel, both linked in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.